Okay. Uh, is there any questions about the, the project? Any questions about the project? Yes, doctor. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, uh, for for being precise in the in the project, may I locate a node right at the sea level? For um, yeah, I guess I guess so, but you don't need to because. Um, uh, let me see. I can share the screen. Let me see. Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, doctor. Okay. Let's suppose I have a beam like that. Okay. See, and I have something like this. I can transform this into this. Discretized two joints, and then this force will be converted into something here, and probably a very small value here. And then since you're pushing this way, you are gonna have a, a moment like this, and from this end, this will try to rotate like that. So these two values, are going to be much smaller than this one, these two here. But yeah, you can transform. But the problem is that, yeah, I, I will be worried about what happens in between. So we should always, I, I, my suggestion is, for example, if I analyze, when I have to analyze a, a proportion system like this, right? I have a coupling here, Let's suppose I have another coupling here. I have support here, another support here, and let's suppose I have here the propeller. There. Here is a big problem. Why? Because this weight is very large. So I always include at least one joint here. So I have one joint here, one here, and one here. This is for, to apply the, the, the force, the concentrated force. This is to apply the condition, no displacement, and at least one here in order to represent adequately the distribution of bending moment in this area, at least. And in between the supports, I always include at least one. There. So I try to uh, represent adequately the distributed forces in between supports. Mr. Nevarez? Um, yes, but uh, in this case, I have the free to locate the joint in between of the support and the, and the free end. Mm -hmm. But what if this is not that's symmetric because we already have a allocation of the of the frames. Oh, remember the the process is general. You can take any load in transformment into equivalent forces and moments. Any, any. Remember that the the transformation of the forces this transformation of equivalent forces into equivalent, I'm sorry, transformation of distributed forces into equivalent concentrated forces. It's a general process. And you don't care about boundary conditions. This is just a load. The solution, in the solution process, yes, then you have to consider supports. But to transform distributed forces into equivalent forces, no, you don't have to consider uh, conditions or supports. So again, it's, uh, think about that. I mean, always have to be worried about 
convergence. So you try to, to, to have that. See, before you start analyzing your results, you have to be certain that your results are adequate, are correct. Then you can conclude, analyze and conclude. But that's all what I can say. Try to, try to discuss a little bit with your, your teams, teammates, and see if the partition that you are doing, the discretization that you are performing is adequate or not. If you feel satisfied with this partition. But don't, don't say, just say, it looks to me okay, but that's not engineering. Engineering means that uh, you say, okay, I have this result with this partition, I have this result with this partition, comparing, analyzing, yes, the conclusion is this partition is correct, and then I'm going to analyze results. What are the maximum stresses? What are the maximum defections? Conclusion, structure is safe or not. Anybody else, please, anybody else? Okay, doctor. Okay, no problem. Who is in group one? Who is in group one? Group one. Is Ortega and Larrea. Ortega, Larrea, who is your, how is your, your project coming? Larrea, Larrea Ortega, will you please tell me something about your project? Is it is it coming correctly or what? No. Okay. Group two. Who is in group two, people? No, you don't want to talk today. Okay, fine with me. Mr. Ordonez. Uh, Mr. Ordonez, are you here? Or Ms. Sayo. Sayo? No, not here. Let's go to the last one. Uh, Mr. Um, Iniguez, I think. Mr. Iniguez is here. Is, is, is Mr. Yeah, Iniguez. How is your project yeah. coming? Uh, fine. I have a question in the in the structure, uh -huh. in the part in the part of the inner bottom uh, and bottom. Uh, I take consider is uh, as something solid. No, you just consider that as a point of a support. For example. Uh, Let's suppose I have a floor like this. Yeah. Okay. And then we have a frame like this. This point could be considered as a clampet. And, and you don't need to include this because this is not a beam, right? Because the, okay. the, the, the height is very important as compared to the length. So it cannot be considered as a beam. So I think this is a very strong point. So what, we, what I suggest to do is to start to start the, your structure from this point and consider this point as clamped. And from there, you have to model and analyze. Yeah, so, that's, uh, that's my... I will consider the inner volume as floor, right? Oh, 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 oh. That, so this is not solid. Mm. This is this is inner bottom. Okay, yeah. that's different. It's different. Okay. Let's suppose I have a, a frame. Okay, let's suppose I have a double bottom like this, right? So I have a frame like this and a frame like that. Okay, in that case, like this. You have to start here, here, and you have to model all of this. Mm, I got it. Okay, this, this is, in this case, this is what we call a solid floor. 
So this is a plate. In this case, this is empty. This is, this is space. Uh, in, in the in shape structure class, remember, I show you in the class notes that there are, uh, you have these uh, transfers and these are solid floors. And in between these solid floors, we have something like this. And this is not solid because you have a space here. I thought you were talking about this, but uh, it seems to me that you are talking about this. And in this case, yeah, you can consider that this point and this point are clamped. And from that point, you model all the structure. You apply the load because of the pressure and all of that. Okay. Okay. No problem. No problem. Um, is there any any other question, people? Any other question? Doctor, sorry. In the connection, the bottom uh, we say is clamped similar or simple support. Here? Yes. No, I wouldn't say, see, this, see, what I'm, I'm, I usually say is this, when you have, see, let's suppose that you have, what is my point? Yeah. When you have something like, like this, okay, two elements like this, and you apply a force or forces like that, Okay, you say, okay, this force here will make this element to compress. This force here will make this element to be in compression. So you say this point will move in that direction. But the problem is that when you have an element in compression, okay, the epsilon x that you obtain is extremely, extremely small. Okay, so when you have these connections, okay, some authors suggest to include a pin here. So this point doesn't move in this direction or in that direction. But my suggestion is leave it like that and then calculate again, including a pin. Usually, usually or commonly, because of the stiffness of this in compression or the stiffness of that in compression, there is no need that you include this point as simply supported. And the thing is that this point will move in this direction and in that direction a very small amount, which is basically simply supported. So my suggestion is do two cases. Leave it like this, no support, and then include an, a, a support there and see if there is any difference. Okay. Because in general, it's not supported. There is no support there. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Uh, if there is no more question, then that will be all for today. Uh, on Monday, I'm thinking about checking, checking the uh, progress of your projects, okay? Remember, the projects are due next Wednesday. We're gonna do presentations, 10-minute uh, presentation for every group. Since you are a lot of groups, we're gonna have uh, two sessions. And I'm going to organize that uh, so we can listen to your presentations. Okay. Uh, I'll try to, to put it in the morning, early in the morning, so we can, uh, the rest of the, the, the day, you can use them to study. Okay. Uh, but the problem is that, yeah, this 12 groups, it's a lot of groups. So we, we have to do it in two sessions. Okay. So probably we will go. Uh, six groups in uh, first, then we'll have a, 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 a stop, a break, and then we will go with the other six. 
um, as uh, I posted, there is some points for the uh, report and some points for the oral presentation. Okay. I will announce the, the time. Um, on Monday, I don't know if you need any progress control. Okay. Um, because on, on, on this week we have our uh, exams. Let's do this, okay? If you need, a, you need to ask questions about the project, uh, on Monday, I, I will be available to you from 7 to 9 a.m., okay? In the, in the time of the class, but it's not obligatory. If your group, have any questions, any doubts, issues about the project? Yes, I will be available on Monday from 7 to 9 a.m., but it's not obligatory. So if you're basically completing on time the project, you don't need to come. But on Monday, on, on Wednesday, I'm sorry, I will listen to your presentations. Any questions, people? Any questions about this? No, uh, just one thing final, I was, I said it in class, but I don't know if you, follow my explanation. Yeah. Just one final comment on, on the transformation of forces, okay? Okay, let's suppose we have an element, okay? This is x, y. Remember, x, y in this case is a global reference system, okay? Let's suppose we have an element like this. Okay, so this is the angle theta for checking. Instead of pushing downwards, let me push upwards to have it positive, okay? So this is local x, this is local y. Okay, so you do a calculation in, in the local x. So let's suppose I have a distributed force like this, let's suppose it's pressure. Okay, so pressure acts in the y direction. Okay, so you integrate from zero to L, the pressure or the force per unit length multiplied by the vector n dx, and you have equivalent forces. So this is equivalent force one y, this is in the local direction, et cetera. So at the end, you're gonna have something like this. So I'm gonna have the, the, the element and I'm going to put this force, only one, only this one, because the other you can interpret in, in, in the, for the other cases. Now, this is the global reference system. I'm gonna put it up here. So you have to transform this force, which is this, this value here, whatever value you got here, you have to transform into this uh, reference system. So we know that F, local F is equal to the transformation times the global, right? And from here, this is local. See, this is local. So you need global from local. So this, you put it on the other side and you can remember that uh, this transformation matrix has this special property that the inverse is equal to the transpose. Okay, so in this case, 
the this T matrix, remember, T matrix is cosine, sine, minus sine, cosine. So the transpose is going to be cosine, they don't move, and these two, they change places like this. Okay? So if we multiply this, in this case, I have no force in the X direction. I have this force in the Y direction, so it's going to be F1, Y, local. So we can say that F1X global is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to minus sine F1Y. And F1Y is going to be cosine F1Y. This is local and this is local. This is local. Jesus, this is local. You are local, man. There. And if you see here, let me change color. Okay. This angle is theta. And you see these two components, this and that. Now this is perpendicular to that. This is perpendicular to that. Dot this angle here is theta. Okay, so this to the left is F1x, right? So this is F1x. This is the opposite to that. So it's equal to this times the sine. And it's to the left, so it's negative. That's this one. The other one is this. So it's the, it's the hypotenusa, which is uh, F1y times the cosine. And that's this one. So this is just transformation. And this in green are the one that you replace into the equilibrium equations, right? Implement support conditions and solve it. Remember that the equilibrium at the end is set up in the global reference system. Okay, people, so uh, let's summarize. I just posted last night the format, okay? So you can follow uh, to complete the, the report, okay? It's uh, an APA, I think, a format for the, for the report. So at the top, you have to fill the, the names of the members of the group, the title, and then you have to present an abstract and all of that. So you have to follow that uh, format. On Monday, I will be available from 7 to 9 a.m. in this system. If you need, if you need to ask me questions about the project, last minute question, I will be available. And I will uh, announce probably on, uh, on, on probably Monday night or, or no more than Tuesday, I will organize the, the timing. Okay, so you will present the, 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 the reports, I'm sorry, your projects on, on, on the time. You will have 10 minutes to do the presentation and then five minutes to answer questions. You will be evaluated in the English, English speaking. You will be available, you will be uh, evaluated in the, uh, your presentation itself and also answering questions. Okay, so that's uh, the agenda. Uh, this uh, homework or this report is due on Wednesday by 8 a.m. So I will, I'm going to change it, okay? Because if we start presentation at 7 a.m., then before that, everybody should, be, should have turned in their, their reports. Okay, so I'm going to change that to 7 a.m. 
if you work in, a, in an adequate path, you should have that report by this weekend. So that change should be no problem to you. Any questions, people? Any final questions? So the presentations are going to be to from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m.? No, I don't think so. Because, uh, see, if I have 12 presentations, just presentations, in a, a, each one takes 10 minutes. That will be two hours. But I have five minutes for questions. So it's going to be probably from 7 to 8.30, take a break, and then we, we, we'll go on with the, next, with the rest. So probably will be more like uh, from seven to 10, more or less. If somebody has a, an, a specific, for, for any reason, has a specific uh, problem, he can ask or she can ask me to put his or her group at the beginning or at the end of that period, be, between seven and 10 a.m. So I can put you there. Everybody should be in the presentation. Everybody should participate. Any more questions, people? Okay, then I'll, if that, there are no questions, then I'll see you Monday if you need, and then Wednesday. Remember, due date or due time on Wednesday is going to be moved back to 7 a.m., not to 8 a.m. Bye now. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome.